Welcome to Fair Game, I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is a five-time world champion who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manny Pacquiao in three classic bouts, former WBO welterweight and light welterweight champ, Tim Bradley. It's so good to meet you. Thank you. I've, I've watched you on TV for a long time, but I'm actually really excited to meet you today. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. I'm glad to be here. So you have battled your way to five world championships, but I have to ask you, which is more of a battle? Manny Pacquiao, his fists, or all the people that invade where you live at Coachella? Because <laughs> <laughs> that sounds crazy to me. Uh, I would have to say Manny Pacquiao for sure. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really do the whole Coachella thing. So, you know, the traffic, it gets kind of hectic, but other than that, I think Manny Pacquiao, that little guy, and whoop my behind. <laughs> Okay. So you yeah. don't evacuate when Coachella comes no. to because I'd be out of there. No, I don't evacuate. You know, most of the traffic's on the freeway anyway. I live more central. Okay. In, in, in Coachella Valley, so it's not it's not a bad thing for me. But Manny Pacquiao, for sure, you know, dealing with that animal, he's a beast. He's yeah. A, he's a legend in the sport. Yes. You had three epic fights with him. Yes. How is each one different? Well, the first time it was like... Um, it was nerve wracking. It was like I was fighting King Kong. The hype around the fight was enormous. Yeah. Manny Pacquiao hadn't lost in like seven years. He was knocking out everybody. Um, and I got my chance to fight him. And it was, you know, it was one of those moment where it was like, it was like the moment that I've been waiting on my whole career that I've worked, you know, worked upon, you know, leading up for 20 something years of my life, dedicating myself to the sport of boxing. I'm finally getting this moment at the top, at the pinnacle of boxing, fighting against the number one pound pound fight in the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was scared, I was scared out of my mind. Scared of what? I, of him, it was just, you getting know, hurt? the moment. No, it's not about getting hurt, it was just like, it was just so much riding, it was so much emotion going into the fight. Um, it was just, you know, I had my goal in mind, but at the same time, it was just like, how hard does he punch? How fast is he? <laughs> you know, you see it on mm -hmm. film, but it's different when you're in there actually fighting them. Sure. It's completely different. And for me, once I stepped foot in that ring, I was okay. But just the whole lead up, sitting inside the locker room, sitting in my hotel room, doing interview after interview after interview, um, just, you know, thinking about the fight over and over and over in my head, it was just so nerve wracking. It was like some, it was like sometimes I felt like crying. <laughs> I was wow. just like, I, it was so much pressure riding on me. Sure. You know, but, um. Were the punches what you expected? They were like bullets. They literally like Manny Pacquiao, when he would throw, everything is just all just stiff, you know, sharp punches, fast, quick feet. Um, his hand and eye coordination was ridiculous. Um, and like when he would miss, I would hear like a snap, like oh. like bullets was flying past my head when he would punch at me, you know. Um, but yeah, the punches were hard, punches were fast. Um, but I felt like I belonged. Like I felt like I was like supposed to be there. I felt like I could compete with him. I felt like I was like, I had speed. He had the power advantage over me, but I felt like I had the speed to be able to stay with him and the ring IQ to be able to deal with what he was dishing out. Right, because not only did you stay with him, but you beat him. Yeah, and yeah. And you, you ended his undefeated streak. I sure did. So to me, that would be like the best thing ever, and you ride this high, but you actually say it led to one of the darkest periods of your yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, you know, it wasn't, the fight itself was like, in the beginning, I got injured in like the second round, mm -hmm. and I was dealing with the injury, it was a foot injury. I tore some ligaments in the bottom of my left foot. And you knew that right away? I knew it right away. I knew something was wrong. Like, cause it's just my positioning. I couldn't put pressure mm -hmm. on my, on the left foot, on the left side. And then in the fourth round, I was trying to get away and I twisted my right ankle. So I was fighting, you know, with no, basically no feet, no right. balance. And it was just pure heart and just pure determination. And, you know, I had the fans at home that, you know, you know, pay for this fight. I was like, I have the responsibility. Huh. They're paying me $5 million. I got to stay in this fight. This, I've been waiting on this moment for, you know, my whole life. I must get through this fight. And after a while, I just went numb. You know, my, my feet went numb and I just fought hard all the way to the end. And then afterwards, uh, my corner, my coach at the time was Joel Diaz. He said, hey, we won this fight. Pick them up. We won this fight. And, you know, I was like, we did. We won this fight. I fought hard all the way through the fight. Um, I gave him a great challenge and, 
you know, after the decision, that's when all hell broke loose. And it was like, I was ridiculed. I was, you know, drugged through just like the mud. People laughed at me. People were telling me to give back the belt that I lost the fight. And I just couldn't understand, like, what did I do wrong? You know, I didn't do anything. I fought my fight. I fought as hard as I possibly can. And the judges felt that I won the fight. What's the problem? What's going on? And I mean, when you got people like Miley Cyrus that was, uh, you know, commenting on it, you know, uh, governor, governors are in, in, you know, different, you know, places, states are commenting on the fight and saying that I need to give the belt back. It's a disgrace to boxing. It's the worst uh, decision in the history of boxing. I mean, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I could not believe what was going on. Well, first of all, no, no disrespect to Miley Cyrus, but <laughs> did that really affect you? You know what? It did. It really did. Miley Cyrus. No, it's just the fact that, like, I'm like, what do you know about boxing? Right. Why are you even commenting? And the fact that it got so much attention, so much exposure, and it kind of, like, you know, went viral all around the world, and we have everybody against you. And, you know, it definitely affects you, because I I felt like I didn't do anything wrong. What was the hardest thing that you had to hear during that time? That I was a fake champion that I didn't deserve to be a champion, that I'm not a true fighter, that I'm not a real fighter. Um, You know, death threats were sent to my home, um, which is, now that I think about it, it's like, like, really? Like, why? And the fact that, you know, I had to walk around and people were like, you know, whispering, you know, and just whispering nasty things to me. And um, I had to deal with that, you know? And it's just something like, You know, you work for something your whole life and you finally get to that point and then you accomplish your goal and then everybody take it all away from you. Like, it just feels like death. It honestly felt like death. And I felt like literally like taking my own life. It was that bad. It was that bad. You know, it was me against the world. It was my family, it was my wife, it was my kids against the world. Like so many people turned their back on me, you know, to turn their back on my family. I just, I mean, I'm just a fan of boxing, so I don't understand why anyone would feel that passionately that you shouldn't have won, that they would do that. Well, Manny Pacquiao was an icon. Do you think it was like his fan base that really led the pack? He's an icon. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's like Michael Jordan, you know, in the boxing world. And, you know, know, people respected him and, and they just, you know, they wanted him to win. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people lost a lot of money you know, Mm -hmm. on the decision and, you know, he was supposed to beat me. But, you know, people shouldn't behave like that, but that's just the norm, you know, once, once one- That's not the norm. It's the norm, this is the norm. People are followers, there's not a whole lot of leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a a few ringside reporters, uh, a few people calling the fight felt that I won the fight. And those were like real men standing up and saying like, no, he won the fight. You know, but it was only a little bit of them. It was only a little pocket of them you know, that was, you know, defending me. Yeah. But the rest of the world kind of just follows what everybody else thinks. They, whether they know something about boxing or not, Molly Cyrus don't know anything about boxing. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the, just that everybody, a lot of people are just followers and they tend to just bully and pick and, you know, you're on social media that no one can see you, you know, no one can see you. So it, people say terrible things. They do. And I had to deal with that. And I would listen to that and I would absorb all of that. At that time, Mm -hmm. I had no clue. But I would hear these things, I would listen to these things, and it affected me, like, drastically, to a point to where, like I said, I wanted to commit suicide. I didn't want to live anymore. It was that. I I didn't want to fight anymore. How'd you get through it? Took a trip. I took a trip to Hawaii with my family. Um, It was just my wife, my kids. And um, we went to Hawaii, and I was driving, driving back to the hotel. We were uh, actually in Oahu, um, and I was angry, I was angry. And I cut this guy off, it was an accident, I cut him off, and then I got back in my lane, and then, you know, he pulls up quickly, and I'm rolling down my window, and I'm like getting ready to like, ah, you know, Yeah, lay take in, it all out on him. Lay in on him, you know? And I pull up, he pulls up, and I roll down a window, and I'm looking at him, and then he goes, and I go, he goes like this, and then I look, and then I go, and I look at my wife, and I'm like, holy crap. So I'm like, you know, I'm back driving again, and I'm just (laughs) Uh like, oh my gosh, like, 
there's still are some great people out here, yeah. you know, in this world. And then at that time, I don't know what it was, I don't know what, what hit me, but it was just like, man, I was like, the only people that I really should really be thinking about right now is the people that's in this car, you know? People that's in this car, that's important to me. I'm gonna stay close to my family. I'm gonna stay close to my wife. My wife's gonna be my best friend and we're gonna move forward and we're gonna battle this thing. And I was just, was just happy after that. Like, I just couldn't believe that, you know, there was, you know, a person like, like this guy. I don't know who he is, but he literally like changed my perspective right away. Hmm. And from that day on, it was like, when I go back, I'm no longer gonna be reading anything on social media. I'm no longer gonna be, you know, uh, looking at my interviews or looking at comments and stuff. I'm gonna turn away from that and I'm just gonna focus on what's in front of me and my family from here on out. So I heard every name in the book. You can, you, you name it, I've heard it. I've been ridiculed, I've been slandered, I've been, you know, Satanized, I've been, you call it, I've, I've, been, I've been called anything and everything, you know, anyone can probably, you know, call anyone. So nowadays it's like, it's changed my life completely because I know who I am now, I know what I'm all about, and I don't care what anybody thinks or say about me now. So not only was it a curse, it was a blessing. Yeah. It truly was a blessing because at first I used to always worry about what people would say about me. And when I see these people, like I, 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 there's people that's around me that are like that. They care about what everybody thinks about them. I just, I, I try to like say like, hey, you, you shouldn't care about that because I've been there before. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.